Welcome to my build of a 60 inch wingspan of anti-patterns plane. In this video I'm going to be looking at fitting the wings to the fuselage and also doing the lock me locking mechanism for the front and the back. The, the first task is to actually uh, shape the, the profile, uh, the, the, the saddle is it maybe, um, for the, the wings to sit on. The fuselage is upside down at the moment and so this is the underside and of course the wings attach on the underside of the fuselage. Uh, but also I need to get that, not only get that to the correct shape, but I need to get the correct angle of incidence. This has got a positive angle of incidence of a sixteenth of an inch, which is about, I think it's 1.6 millimetres. I really like it when plans have that kind of information listed. It just gives you confidence. The last couple of plans I've built haven't had that information, so it's quite nice. So essentially, if it's a, a positive angle of incidence, the wings need to uh, tilt up, if you think the fuselage is upside down at the moment, so that will be, so they need to tilt up just uh, 1.6 millimetres in relation to the back. Um, to measure that, let me just show you what I've done. The, the fuselage, as I said, is upside down. Now, the angle of incidence is going to be measured from, let me just push this former in, in case it damages it. The angle of incidence is going to be measured from a centre line down the middle of the plane. And this is the centre line from which it's measured. And this is where, can you see that? Yeah, this is where the tailplane sits on there, flat, uh, zero angle of incidence in relation to the rest of the fuselage. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what I've done is I've turned this over and I've sat that on the bench, on blocks, so that now this central line here is parallel with my building table. So I now know that the building table I can measure off to take that angle of incidence on the wing. Now, if I pull up F3, the former that we're gonna use for locking, I'm not taking this totally out, because the fuselage sides just go in a little. So I'm just having that to keep them at the right spacing. Um, I've said this a few times, that's not glued in because it it's, it's can't be done until I've actually fitted the wings. Now, with the wings themselves, if I just get the wing, um, I haven't got an incidence meter, which you attach to the front and the back and it tells you the, the inclination. So what I've done is I've put four pins in the wing. I've put the ones on the back in the central line for the mylar hinges, just push those in. And at the front, I put them in the center of the ball nose. You can see, just put the, the pins in there and in the back. And that's what I'm gonna use as a measure, as a reference point for getting the angle of incidence correct. Um, let me just put these weights into the fuselage to hold it still. Okay. Um, so if I sit that on there, what I can do is I can take my ruler and I can measure from those pins to the bench, knowing that the bench is flat uh, and level, parallel, sorry, with my central reference line, datum line. I can measure the back and I can measure the front and the front will need to be lower by 1.6 millimetres. I'm measuring right against the wing where I've stuck the pin in because obviously the further out I measure on the pin, I could be getting inaccuracies because the pin might not be perfectly level. So I'm measuring it right at the, um, at, at the, the edge where it goes into the balsa. And by measuring that, I will get the correct angle of incidence. And on this side now, I've sanded that and got that quite nice. And the angle of incidence on that is pretty much where it needs to be. Um, that's 147 millimeters. And this is just under 149 millimeters. Um, I'm not worried about, the, the, about getting that 
absolutely spot on at the moment because I've only done that one side on the fuselage. I still need to do this side now. I, I did try sanding these uh, both together, but just felt I, I couldn't really keep an eye on, on, on both, um, both at once. So I thought I'd get this side right, now I'm gonna do that side right, and then I will fine tune this a little bit. And what I've been doing is I've been putting the wings on, I've been looking underneath and seeing where I need to sand and just marking that so you can perhaps see there's a pencil mark there and there where I just need to, to, to remove a little bit and it just kind of focuses my, my mind on, on where I need to sand. So I'm going to get on now and uh, sand this side so that that brings the wing um, level with the table because at the moment it's, it's kind of cocked over a little bit. Um, so I will not only be fine tuning this eventually to get these correct, but I will also be making sure that the wing tips are the same height as well uh, as each other, so that the wing is totally parallel. And because this is sat on those, uh, those blocks, it's not only parallel that way, but it's, it's square or parallel that way as well, the, the, the fuselage. So I'm gonna get on and do that now. And once that's in place, uh, and correct, I will do the locking mechanism at the front and then finally do the bolting down here on the back to, to tighten this down. It's interesting that looking at the plans, uh, I'd I, I cut these, um, these, uh, these shapes uh, as per the plans, but they actually needed quite a little bit of, quite a bit of sanding, mainly off this back edge to get them to sit properly and to sit down far enough. They're a little bit um, high or low, or depends how you look at it, I suppose. So anyway, I will stop talking and get on and sand this now, and we'll come back and have a look at that mechanism in a minute. Right, well, I've been, feels like I've been sanding forever, and I've now got the wing sitting perfectly right. It's level, it's the, the same height at each wing tip. Um, which is good, just what we want. The pins at the front on the back are the same height, yes. And we also have the correct angle of incidence, which actually, <laughs> when you're talking about just a, a, a sixteenth of an inch, um, that's quite Difficult. I, I was quite surprised how much fine tuning and sanding I had to do to get that just right because it, it, it's hardly anything, it's just a whisper really. And then the other thing I've been doing is I've got this uh, just a, a, a length of steel with a hook on the end and I just hook that into the penultimate rib, this, uh, this last but one rib here, and the same on the other side and check the measurement to the very tip of the fuselage just to check the wings are on square in relation to the fuselage and yes I measured the distance of that last rib uh, sorry the, the, the second rib there from the, the terminal rib just to make sure they were both uh, equal there was nothing on the on this on the end that I could comfortably hook into so I'm quite happy now that that is, is in the correct place. Um, it, it really is dependent upon uh, sitting the wings just right and, and making sure you get them in just the right place where they naturally sit. And I think when it comes to it, uh, I will probably do the locking in mechanism at the front and then I might, once I've done the bolts here, I may need to do a little bit of fine tuning just to get that correct. But now the next job is to work on this locking mechanism so I can just pull this back a little bit, push that all the way home and then just mark where that's going to be. I just need to make sure that when I push the wings they don't rise up a little bit. So I will have a look at that now. I'll just move the, the camera in so you can see that a bit closer. Okay so we can we can just see the tongue there sticking out of the, the front of the wing 
and I need to cut a slot in F3, the former, to allow that to lock in. So if I push that down now into place, fully into place, now if I just push that up against there, it's very easy to, uh, to mark that now with a line across there and assume that's correct. But I don't think we can assume that's correct because I think as I push the wings forward, they're going to move up or down. So let's just test that. If we just pull this up, so that is more or less parallel with that or in line with that. If I push this now, yeah, you can see that former just moving up a little bit. So it just wants to, and if you pull it back, you can see there's just a very slight gap underneath it. So if we just get that in place, and if I draw that line now, let's just line that up. And the sides. I now know that that hole wants to be very slightly higher because uh, that rises up as you push in the wing. But what I think I will do is cut it at that line and then I will sand it, file it, just so this is a nice, tight, precise fit into there. I've now cut the slot into the former F3 and epoxied that into place, so that's nice and secure. And there's a really good, strong attachment there on the, on the front of the wings that doesn't move anywhere, so, so that's, that's really nice. The next thing I need to do is think about the attachment at the back here. Um, if you saw previous videos, you'll know I've strengthened it in here and packed it so that it won't compress. And I'm going to be using 6mm nylon bolts and I'm going to drill a couple of holes through the rear of the wing and into this plate that I've put here. This is a 5mm plywood plate and I've just epoxied that into place with these side strengthening bars and a little bit extra at the front here. I, I was just concerned that it's quite high up here or, or low down if you like, it's quite close to the edge anyway. So there's, you could, it could conceivably split that there if there was a lot of pressure on it. So these uh, plywood pieces just come down the side a little bit just to give a bit more, more purchase. When putting uh, or drilling the holes for those bolts, I'm actually going to drill through at an angle so that it's square uh, or at a tangent to the wing surface. I obviously don't want to be at an angle either way. I want to be nicely square on so the head of the bolt sits square on here. And I'll probably have a like a little uh, a washer out of 3mm or 2mm ply or something. So I've marked out the line where I strengthen the wing and I'm going to drill through into this plate and I'm going to put captive nuts on the back, end, back side and it would have been nice to have angled this plate a little bit so it was actually parallel with the uh, underside of the wing but to do that would have brought this top edge even closer to, to this edge here and, and it would have just it wouldn't have been quite so strong. So I'm going to drill through that now. Yes, it will go through at an angle. The captive nuts on the back will be slightly at an angle. But what I will do is I will sit them, I will put a, a thin piece of a pock, a, a thin piece of balsa wood on the back, which these will stick into, and I will epoxy around. So it just goes good and solid, and they'll sit at that angle, ready for the bolts. Just one very last thing before I drill the holes for the, the nylon bolts. Got to make sure the wing's on square. So I'm just using my piece of steel with a hook on the end in the penultimate rib and just checking from either side back and forth just to make sure that is correct, which it is now. It wasn't at first, it just had to go just a, a, a hair one way. 
It's also very snug in at the front here, so that's perfect. So I'm going to get those holes drilled before anything moves. Well, it's really exciting. I've got the wings finally fitted onto the fuselage now and with the correct angle of incidence. So I've just literally um, epoxied the, the captive nuts on now, which I'll show you in a second. But that's a really good solid fit. And you can just see the, the, the bolts here, the nylon bolts. I've tried to space those as wide apart as possible just because the wider they are, the more it will be resistant to the wings rocking. Uh, not that I think these are going to go anywhere because that is really, really solid. But I'll take the wings off now and just quickly show you uh, inside. Well, this is the underside of the wings here where the bolts come down through the wing and screw into uh, the captive nuts on that plate. You can see here I've put in um, a piece of balsa which I've just sanded to the same profile as the, uh, the wing saddle and that will just um, kind of protect it, if you like, from, from being compressed when the bolts are tightened up, just to give it a little bit of rigidity. And if we take a look at the inside, let's turn the fuselage around. I don't know how well that will show up in this light. I'll just try and zoom in. Well, hopefully you can see in there, it's not the best light and angle, but there's the, the plywood plate. I put on five mil of balsa on top of that to give something extra for these um, captive nuts to, to bite into. They go through the balsa and they do bite into the plywood as well. And once I'd got those tightened up, lined up, and knew they were at the right angle, I've put a ring of epoxy around that. So that's really secure and it, it, it's not going to go anywhere now. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So the next stage now is to move on to working on the, the actual fuselage itself. And it, it feels like ages since I've done anything on this. So I'm, I'm quite excited to be getting back to, to doing something to it. So thanks for watching this video, which I'm going to finish now. And I hope you'll come back and, uh, and see the next one. And I, I really appreciate your support. Thank you.